Hi there, Travel and Things presents In Conversation With. I'm your host, David Batsoffen, and my guest today needs no introduction. Therefore, I'm not going to introduce him. Rico, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Nice to be here. Your new book has just come out, Days of Our Lockdown Lives, by yourself and Stephen Francis. It's published by Jakana. Um, and I see right on the very cover, you've got everything that one needs. Load shedding, hand sanitizer, gin, and a hardy doll. What more could somebody want? And homeschooling. And, and homeschooling. <laughs> that sums up much of last year, <laughs> of the previous year. It, it does. What do you mean last year? The last decade? Because I think 2020 was in fact a decade. We, we, we will only realize this when we look in the history books well into the future. Mm, yeah, you, you might have a point there, yes. But it was a, it was a, a, an unusual year, to put it mildly. It, um, was, it in, was quite a challenge. I should imagine so. But for yourself that probably had been working from home before, were there any major changes that you faced? Um, no, not, not, not in the end, not that much. I mean, things got a little erratic as, as some of the company, you know, some of the clients I work for, et cetera, you know, when they were adjusting to the new setups, but for myself specifically, no, because I mean, it, it was just work for a home studio and, uh, you know, with, with, uh, you know, all the electronic email, et cetera, you know, that it, it was my pretty much the same. Um, yeah. but the environment there was a challenge to 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 with, with lockdown and just trying to see you know if you if you think back to a year ago um we kind of had no idea how this was going to pan out and it was looking quite scary and we had a you know a few months of it was very hard work trying to find and and, and pan and go on the lighter side of things <laughs> it was quite <laughs> stressful actually I was about to ask you, so, so the new book, um, Days of Our Lockdown Lives, in fact, you touch, there is a cartoon here um, on, on Zoom, um, yes. which, I think, which I think is rather apt. <laughs> when waking up every day in 2020, or, you know, I think, let's just go back to the beginning, 20, the 27th of, of March, when our president did the first my fellow South Africans, and we all went, ooh, ah, this will only be 21 days, and it'll all be lovely and wonderful, and then 21 begat and begat and begat, and here we find ourselves 13 months later, and we're still in a similar position. Not quite the same, but similar. Did you, how did this book come about? Um, well, the in essence, every year we do a compilation of the previous year's um, cartoons. Right. Um, it essentially goes from um, one end of uh, August to the August of the next year. So this book actually ends at the end of August 2020. And, um, you know, in terms of contents of cartoons. So it's yeah. a compilation. And we, we, we we're sort of racking our brains in terms of every, every, try, every year we try and get a, a title that sort of captures the essence of of, of the year and this after a bit of racking our brains we actually came up with this one and in, in some ways some aspects of it was also uh, a bit of a soap opera too <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> so, so it was a you know it was it was drama it was it was uh, I think it kind of reflects the you know you're saying where we had a, in a similar space but also not because we know mm -hmm. more um, you know and, and or we should know more in a sense in terms of behavioral uh, you know and things and and but it's a constant shifting thing and, and, and there are no absolutes and our, our sort of uh, in, as, as typically South Africans our, our kind of sort of stumbling handling of these kind of things uh, right. um, is, is reflected and gave us a lot of material you know everything from the mundane things like <clears throat> masks uh, you know lockdowns the zoom meetings uh, which was, uh, you know, <laughs> the year of Zoom, I guess, for some people. You know? And then on the other hand, for some people, things didn't change. And, 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 you know, the people who could work from home and have Zoom meetings, you remember, those were the fortunate ones. Yes. Yeah. You know, there's always that, that balance. And, and for, the, for the rest of us, we, we'd never heard of Zoom. And then all of a sudden, it became a staple. It's like mask, sanitizer, Zoom. Yes. It was as simple as that. You know, I think my first Zoom conference was, in fact, the funeral of a friend. But that I don't want to bring this whole tone of the conversation down. Um, the, the all, this particular book, was were these new cartoons or cartoons that 
you'd had already done and then it all as you say it was just just became a compilation it's a compilation i mean it's it's all the the year from uh all the dailies and the, the weekly cartoons from um sort of september tw uh, 2019 all the way through mm -hmm. to to august 2020 okay. and um so and we'll do this well we've been doing this for like you know uh, since uh, 1995 i think or 97 97 oh, you, I think, yes uh, you missed out those first few years otherwise you and our democracy would have been the same age <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had we had it took a while because we started out in in the then weekly mail, uh, yes. doing one cartoon a week, and that wouldn't have amounted to much of a you know, uh, and then um, <laughs> would have been and then we, we, we yeah we later started it would have been a very slim volume <laughs> that first one. and and then we started in the star and then the, all the dailies uh, okay. you know, we sort of expanded into it and we were producing like a normal uh, you know, like your Calvin Hobbes. Or, yeah, countries drinks you know enough for volume to actually fill a book every year. It it just reminded me for a moment some of those uh, the satirical stories that uh, Mad Magazine used to do of thin books. Um, <laughs> yes, that would have been one year worth of comp no, one day's worth of compilation. It's a cover. Yeah, promises the government keeps. <laughs> yeah. Postal service and how it gets to us. <laughs> But what's going to happen? You know, I'm I'm looking at the the one cartoon here, which is the boy who cried wolf, um, and and I see the Donald appears in this. Um, he was he was fair game, but is Joe Biden fair game now? I mean, the man can't remember what day of the week it is or who he's talking to. Um, I, I don't. Th I think that's more of a possibly a. a, a... Um, an American right wing meme in a sense. I mean, he's doing really, I mean, he's doing quite well, actually. Yeah. I, mean, they're, they're, I mean, compare their vaccination program with ours. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think they've Sorry? 100 million people what? vaccinated. You know? What is this vaccination program of which you speak? <laughs> well, I have a running bet with somebody. What will happen first? We get vaccinated or Jacob Zuma has his day in court? <laughs> so I'm getting even odds. <laughs> Are you preparing? Just on that note, Rico, are you preparing? Do you prepare cartoons in advance? We know, for instance, that our ex-president now um, his his lawyer left, um, yes. which it ju which just means it's going to be a while because he's got to find a new lawyer, he's got to find finances, all of that type of thing. So his day in court is not going to be anytime soon. We've waited sixteen years for this. Um, are you already preparing panels with? various outcomes or do you wait for the day that it happens and then go okay for tomorrow i can draw um it varies it depends on on on, on if we can predict things You're right um you know otherwise it's a gen generic theme we have things in reserve we have sort of a you know the, the sort of standard uh daily life ideas it is always some things in reserve and then we we sort of latch on to things um mm. i'm actually actually just working on on you know uh Actually, on, on the Zuma theme, on, on a cartoon that's going out for tomorrow for the dailies. On, on, <laughs> there you go. On, between, you know, yeah. So between that and Escom, you guys, you 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 don't have to come up with anything. You don't. All you got to do is draw the cartoon. It's as simple as that. <laughs> oh, that's what I wish. <laughs> <laughs> just just yeah. on that. Just it's, on it's that. Another thing. thin book. Another <laughs> thin book. Cartoons that write themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Cartoonists that have real jobs. Um, do people do people still ask you with all the fame and for, um, fortune that goes with Madam and Eve and the rest of the world? That, another thin book that, that you can't do. Um, do people still go? Okay, so, but what is your real job? No, not anymore. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, yes. Uh, there was there was a time when that actually um, um, there was there, there was a funny there was that other when you were joking. So, you know, there was a point where people, oh, what is your real job? Yeah. And then on, on the, the other hand, the joke of the fame and fortune, you know, it was kind of, oh, you must be raking it in, you know, in a private jet and all that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> people have no no idea. I, I remember teaching years ago students uh, radio broadcasting, and I said to them. What do you think a radio broadcaster gets per show? And the one young girl said, said a, a figure, and I went, you mean per show or per decade? And she went, no, <laughs> per show. And I, then I told her what I was getting, and there was stunned silence from the room. 
And she said, no, we thought you were getting much more than that. I mean, welcome to the real world. You know, <laughs> no idea. So the, the jet, so, so, so the jet is not happening just yet. Because I thought I um, on social media that you'd put a deposit down, although that was a small deposit <laughs> for a large jet. <laughs> it's a small deposit for a tiny jet. <laughs> yeah. for the, a little die cast matchbox. <laughs> hey, listen, why not? So this particular book out now, um, available now, um, you've gone hard copy with this because a lot of, well, <laughs> soft cover, hard copy. Mm. Um, because it seems like a lot of people, are, a lot of authors are turning to ebooks and self-publication now because it seems to be becoming more difficult to put out real books because they're ex real in inverted commas because they're expensive. Um, yes, I mean we still we still find that people enjoy the up yeah. uptake on we've we've had digital versions of the Manmies before the uptake hasn't been particularly uh, great and people who. Uh, follow it digitally will do it on the social media yeah um, but people still like that uh, uh you know the hard copy and yeah and um you know it's and it's and it's it's done gratifyingly well i mean it's we <laughs> like i said at, at, at this time last year we didn't even know there were still more there were going to be malls around the bookshops or things you know i mean it was like apocalyptic <laughs> in terms of economic it, meltdown and things and, and, it, 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 and then you had to you have to plan your publishing like uh, you know eight months yeah. in advance, six months in advance. And it's, well, so well all of those tricky. all of those launches never happened. Specifically, everybody who planned it for like March, uh, yes, and in January for March, and we're getting all excited about a launch, and then my fellow South Africans put that one to bed. Yes, the, <laughs> the scariest words for South Africans, my fellow South Africans. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's, it. it it, it is peculiar of how our, our sort of perceptions have changed. You, know, you watch a movie or a TV show, and there's crowds of people together, and you're going, "Are they nuts? <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing? All crowded together in another room?" You know? Yeah, you, you've got to sort of look at the date on the movie now. Yes. Um, to go, okay, so it was made pre 2020. Okay, so they could they could hug and hold hands and kiss and do all of those sort of things. Um, most of the TV shows currently have taken COVID as a theme. And, and have worked around that. When you put um, Days of Our Lockdown Lives together, you and, and Stephen, were there any cartoons that you sort of look back on to the beginning of lockdown and went, you know what? We don't need to rehash those. Those were, were hurtful and in retrospect, maybe a, it wasn't as funny as we thought. And, and you yeah. made a decision not to put them into the book. No, not really. Uh, we were always, I mean, at, at this point, we're always at, at the point of making or, or drawing and writing cartoons are very cognizant of that all the time. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's several decades of experience. We kind of know what works and what mm. doesn't. And, and we, we weren't going to be flippant about things. And, yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of a fine line between silly and uplifting. And I look at, um, and you know but it's always there's certain principles we follow you know mm -hmm. like like never punch down for instance or you know kind of and sensibilities and and sort of what's acceptable in society and what envelopes and i think those things shift and change all the time and we quite we quite we, we quite but now we know how to navigate this yeah. and and, and <laughs> you know and um no no we haven't actually and it was okay. and, but that what made it so that made what made it so tricky i mean there's probably a, quite a few ideas i mean i don't remember them now but there's quite a few ideas that ended up in the waste paper but because of rather not let's not go this direction yeah. that would be insensitive etc with with your weekly panels um your newspaper panels do you find that if you've strayed a little bit from your own line, the line that you've drawn in the sand, and that you stray from that, do you find that the feedback is instantaneous from your readers? It is on social media. That has changed. Uh, um, you know, it's when we start when we started out in, back in. I mean, our first we started out in May '92, <laughs> so, and um, the. Um, you know, back then it was the sort of the, the letter to the editor kind of thing. So there was this this filtered, uh, um, 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 slow process. Yeah. yeah, and then then we then we've got on Twitter, Facebook, all this thing. You know, and then now, but now and then the, the feedback is instantaneous. And um, and yeah, and it's and it's. I mean, you get this thing of people who willfully uh, misunderstand mm -hmm. um, or, or have an agenda or how they approach things. But generally, no. I mean, we kind of have. 
I think we're true to our characters and we try and write what we can relate and what we know and, mm. and, and always inject a sense of humanity into, I mean, it's a principle I do for my editorial cartoons as well. It's even if I'm slaking off somebody, I always put, try and inject a sense of humanity into yeah. my character. And, and that's, that's quite important because it's quite easy to be, to be incredibly harsh and aggressive. Yeah, and, for sure. And, 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 and all two things. But it's, they, it's, it's, they say the pen is mightier in the, than the sword and in the, case of a satirical cartoonist it very definitely is. Rico, do people recognize you in the street uh, when you're out, when you used to be able to get out of the bar? And if so, have they asked you, because I know when you and I met to have coffee, you did very kindly did that for me in about a 30th of a second. Um, and do, do people say, oh, you're Rico from Madame and Eve, please won't you sign whatever it is and if there is that, what is the strangest thing you've ever drawn a picture of? Um, no, there isn't. There isn't much. There isn't much of that because we're not. Uh, you know, we're not ourselves. You know, we're the, the cartoons and the, yeah. and the cartoon strip in a sense. You know, we don't put ourselves into the cartoon strip. Uh, um, so no, there's there's hard. I mean, sometimes people will know, or, or you know, of, of you or some. Or we have. Or used to have things like book signings. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, generally, but generally, no. People want the characters drawn or the visual of the characters. So, so okay. thankfully, we haven't had very strange. Uh, we've had some <laughs> odd messages that people want written in the book. <laughs> really, <laughs> books, sort of cryptic things that I don't understand. I don't want to know. You know, but it's. <laughs> but it, I mean, I don't recall. But but those those kind of things. Uh, um, but no, and and I would, and if it's too weird and 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 just doesn't gel with what the what Madame and Eve is, I wouldn't do it. You know, there's okay. a certain spirit to what we do. And, yeah, and, and we, I mean, we've had we've had things where people make suggestions of ideas for cartoon. And we just, just no, there's no way. You know, it just doesn't. <laughs> I mean, do you, do you even read the cartoon? <laughs> yeah. You have you not? Do you not know what our demographic is? You know, years ago, um, the late Alvon Collison was seen walking out of a particular stationery shop carrying a pile of albums, um, Joseph and his amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And he was asked about them, why he bought all of these, because he was in the original as Pharaoh. And he said they were in like a boo-boo bin and he felt so sad and sorry for them. And they were like 10 cents a piece or something. So he bought all of them just to take them home and give them a place to go and die peacefully type of thing. <laughs> If you ever knew Alvon, that was his sense of humor. But that question leads into my next to you is, have you ever walked into a bookstore? I'm, I'm sure you have. And then you found not, not a, a new store, um, a secondhand bookshop. And you found Madame and Eve, either singly or, or piles of them. And you've gone, really? You bought it and you haven't kept it? What sort of people are you? <laughs> You, you read my mind there. <laughs> um, what, what I've actually noticed, because we've been, we've been, like I said, we've been since 92, we've published since 94, 95. I mean, it's been a long, we're one of the longest concurrent ongoing publishing exercises in South Africa, actually. I think that is Wine Guide and the Watson Road Atlas, I think, beats us out or something, you know, in terms of longevity. So eventually what, what, what has happened in the last few years, I've noticed that people obviously might have been uh, estate or somebody's clearing out or some you know new house that that whole collections have have ended up with 20 books or something as a set have added have ended up in second hand bookshops and things <laughs> and I kind of like and i'd and love to see if so it'd be nice to think that somebody would actually buy them as a set yeah keep them. i was going to say are there any anyone that is more valuable than the next that there were fewer copies made or copies haven't survived that type of thing um well, there was there was a the first one we ever brought out, the Madame Eve collection. There was a problem which sort of uh, came out later, several months later, that the the, the what do you call it, the laminating wasn't very good mm. that the printers did. So they they kind of scuffed quite easily. So there's okay. quite a few very scuffed ones, and we did a we did a second print run which was better. So those first ones, if you have one in mint condition, it could be worth something. I have no idea. You know, it's like, worth a rand, worth a rand seventy five now. Um, yes, let or, me let me know. I've got some in the vault. Huh? <laughs> just, just to get back to, to a question I asked you earlier, or that you brought up about the fact that you and Stephen are not in the cartoons, have, have you know, much like Orson Welles, who always put himself in a scene, um, he, there was always the shadow or the, the silhouette of his face 
or something. You knew it was an Orson Welles production. Have you guys never felt like, you know, in a crowd scene, just in, well, like, where's Waldo? Where's Rico? Just inserting an outline of, of you into a, into a panel, just for the hell of it. No, no, no not really. Yeah, no, I mean, we don't have time to do crowd scenes, so. <laughs> <laughs> you can't afford them. <laughs> Those things get straight back, sent straight back to the writing department. <laughs> we don't have time. I'm sorry, we can only do two people this week. We don't have budget for any more. <laughs> what is the, what is next for for Madame and Eve? Um, we we basically carry on. I mean, we've been through a period of of of, um, and we still are in a sense of of not knowing exactly how the media. Um, landscape sort of sort of evolves i mean i'd, I'd like to i mean we kind of like a bit, a bit like sort of the, the comfortable couch you know the furniture we've been around mm. for a long time and we still appreciate we still have a gratifying a lot of our young readers which is quite nice you know that you see some of these 10 or 11 year old devouring the books even that are that are 10 years that are older than the person yeah. reading them which is quite interesting <laughs> you know, and wanting to know what this is all about and actually enjoying it so that's that's, that's quite quite nice and it's always been gratifying to see some of the youth of our readers which also has tempered some of our content right um, and some of the sort of more rude adult ideas that we could get you know we're gonna or themes we keep out uh you know um but uh yeah i don't I, think I, we give to, I don't think we Sorry. give the younger we don't, I don't think we give youngsters enough credit for that type of stuff. We always say, "Oh, we didn't put it in because of the children." The children could tell us those things anyway, you know, with the, with the modern true uh, modern children. <laughs> it's, it's true, but uh, you kind of don't want. Uh, uh, I, I, maybe it's more a reaction of those children's parents. I get, I don't yeah. know. You know, it's just it just we set a tone and we we, we kind of uh, stick to it. You know that that uh, always always like to sort of you know we stick the knife in but we, we wrap it in a little bit of silk and charm and we, <laughs> you know, that's quite a, that's just the, the way the way we look things just just as we wrap things up uh, rico and thank you very much for your time it's always nice chatting with you um normally when i talk to people there's the bookshelves behind them and i try and read titles but behind you is a is one of those your country needs you type posters with what looks like an elderly brit with the, the moustache and the pipe and the old tin hat. I can only read the you on that particular poster. What does the rest of it say? Um, that's actually a, a poster done by uh, cartoon Dr. Jack. Ah, okay. And he did it for the, uh, let's have a look quickly. It says your shell hole needs you. It was for raising for the for the moths. I uh, did that was about a decade ago. And always love that, that his execution of, of Pose. And above above that is actually uh yeah, it's an old colored madam Eve when we still hand color them. Okay. See above the frame on that easel. Okay, and there's, it's, uh, there's something that must be worth a bob or two. I think it was hand colored. Nowadays everything's done on computer. Yes, and it's uh it's, it's quite faded with the ink when you see it. Yeah. And it's basically meet meet the great El Nino and this big Mexican bandage. <laughs> That 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 podium and the only ten rand is is grist for a whole nother conversation between you and I, because you know much like Snoopy and Lucy, the Doctor is in. Um, you've chosen to do Eve being that role, and you made me snort tea through my nose on more than one occasion when I've been having a cuppa and reading your looking at your cartoons at the same time. So thank you in a satirical way, in a sarcastic way for that. <laughs> Rico, it's always good fun talking to you. Thank you so much. Uh, the book is called Days of Our, let's go, uh, Days of Our Lockdown Lives. It's published by Jaconov and it's available now. I wish you guys all the very best. Thanks for chatting to me. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.